Hello and welcome to the answers to the non-calculated paper from November 2013. Uh, answers are also in a PDF form on my website. Right, question one is worded number questions. Make sure you know these are either right or wrong. So it's worth checking to make sure you're right. Uh, so we've got 246, take away 69, be very careful, make sure you carry and everything like that. 177 uh, people watched on Thursday. Read this next one very carefully, don't mix up your days. So you've got 246 plus 87, uh, which means 333 people watched on Friday. Again, four pounds a ticket, and now 246. Again, make sure you read the question very carefully. Uh, do your multiplication. Again, be careful. Check if you need to. And make sure that you're 984 pounds. Last one is 522 pounds. There are six pounds every DVD. So a bit of bust up here. Uh, no six is going to five. Remainder five. Eight six is a 48. Remained a two, four, and then seven sixes are 42. 87 DVDs were sold. Question two is about fractions, decimals, and percentages. 5% uh, as a fraction is 5 out of 100. These are both divisible by 5, and so you get 1 20th. You need, do need to show your working for this one, even though some people may know that 5% is 1 20th. 9 20th, you could either do this by a bit of bus stop division. It's easier to make it into hundredths. So it's 45 hundredths, which is then written as 0 0.45. Again, you need some form of working out there. 11 25ths, well 25 goes into 100 four times, so multiply top and bottom by 4, and you get 44 over 100, which means it's 44%. And in the final part, I prefer writing them as decimals. Some people may prefer as percentages. This one, 0 0.4 recurring, it's 0.4444 and so on. And then that one's 0.44. Start with the smallest is 42%, and then it's 11 25ths, and then it's 0.4 recurring, and it's helpful to write it out so you can see, and then finally it's 9 uh, 20ths, which is the biggest one there. Question three is on bid mass, and question four is prime factors. So it's well worth writing bid mass at the top, so you check you get the right order. So we do the division first. So nine divided by three is three. Now be very careful. When you add and subtract, think of it as journey up and down the number line. So 12 minus three is nine, plus six is 15. Again, one mark for working, one mark for answer. On this one, the square root of 16 is 4, so I'm going to write it out again, but the 4 there. Next, I multiply, so it's 10 minus 12, which is then negative 2 for the answer to that one. Next, number 4, we've got 180 as prime factors. It doesn't matter how you do your prime factoring. Uh, I tend to start with two, and then keep going until it's not even anymore. Uh, and then I divide by three, if it's divisible by three. And pretty soon, I end up with just prime numbers here. Uh, it doesn't say with indices. So if you wrote two times two times three times three times five, that's fine. With indices, it's two squared times three squared times five. You can then use that to work out how many 15s go into 180. Because if I've got the 15 there, if I divide by 15, I get rid of those, which means I've got two times two times three 
is 12. But there's nothing to stop you doing a quick bit of bus stop division, how many 15s go to 180 there. My question five is about place value. We're looking at decimal places and how we can make the equivalent uh, calculation. This one's got one decimal place, so this will have one decimal place, 677.1. In this one, you've got four decimal places, one, two, three, four, so there goes the decimal points, and so zero points, six, seven, seven, one. And this last one, it's been turned around a bit, so you've got something times 3.7, is 6,771. Now that's been made 10 times smaller, so this one has got to be 10 times bigger, which means uh, adding a zero on the end there. In the final bit, you can either do uh, a bit of long multiplication, 183 times 36, or you can use this, that's 183 times 37, we need it times 36, so I can do 6,771, take away 183, which would leave me with 6588. Uh, Be very careful, the answer is in pounds, so you need to do 65 pounds, 88p. Do not forget decimal points, it's pounds and pence. Okay, number six is all about fraction operations. We've got a quarter plus a sixth. The lowest common denominator is 12. So that's times three times three, three twelfths, times two times two, two twelfths, which means there's five twelfths left. Make sure you simplify if you don't use 12 as your common denominator. That means there are seven twelfths left. And if you do half of 7 twelfths, it would be 7 twenty fourths by multiplying top and multiplying bottom. Tanya does one sixth on her first go, and she does another sixth on her second go, which means she's done two sixths, which simplifies, of course, to one third. Now in the final bit, we need quite a bit of calculations for this. Let's start with Susan. So Susan did a quarter of the whole thing, and then seven twenty-fourths of the whole thing. So cross cancel here and here, that's 12. That and there, that's two and one. So we've got 12 plus 14, which is 26. Uh, holes in total, and then Tanya does a third of the whole thing, and a third of 48 is 16. So read the question very carefully because it asks you how many more, and then she's done 10 more than Tanya. Okay, question 7 is more fractions, and then question 8 we're on substitution. So we've got two-thirds of a bottle a day, so we've got 12 bottles. So how many two-thirds go into 12? Well, if you divide by a fraction, you turn it upside down and multiply. So you've got 6 times 3, which is 18, 18 days, which makes sense because she's not drinking a whole bottle a day, so it's got to last more than 12 days. Joseph drinks 5 6 every day. And he does that for 30 days, so cross cancel, 5 5 to 25 days. Question 8 is substitution. It's well worth writing bid maths again for these substitutions. So, no calculations, write it out. 3 4 is 12, 2 5s are 10, which means 22. Again, write it out without calculating, using bid mass, that would be 20 minus negative 3, and if you take away a negative, you add it, 
23. Uh, in this one, you've got five lots of four plus two times minus three. If I do the brackets first, two times minus three is minus six. So I've got four plus minus six, which is four minus six minus two. Five lots of minus two is minus 10. It's always, I prefer doing it by working out the brackets first and then multiplying by that in front. If you do do five lots of four and five lots of minus six, that will work as well. Last part, negative three over four plus five. Uh, so you've got negative three over nine, uh, which if you simplify, gets you negative one third. Right, question nine is on equations, lots of marks for these equations, so make sure you show your working step by step. Times by three both sides, so W is 36. Next one, add seven to both sides, so you've got 4x is 24, then divide by four, so x equals six. Uh, this one, multiply the brackets first, And now we've got this minus y, which we can collect like terms. So you've got 5y plus 3 is 18. Then take away 3 from both sides. So 5y is 15. Then divide by 5. And y equals 3. So three marks for that. So take your time, do it step by step. This last one, this is a letters on left one. So minus 2z from both sides. So you've got 6z plus 6 equals negative 3. Take away 6 from both sides. 6z equals negative 9. And then divide by 6 both sides. Uh, you can either do it as fraction uh, or bit of bus stop. I generally prefer to do it as a fraction, negative 1 and a half. like that. And then the final one, uh, we've got this funny question, y over x plus y, a few different ways of doing this one. I did it by saying y equals 2x, so instead of y, I'm going to write 2x, and then on bottom, instead of y, I'm going to write 2x, which means I've got 2x over 3x, I can cancel the x's because they're the same variable which means I've got two thirds. But there are a couple of different ways that you can do that. Right, question 10 is on cuboids. Make sure you've got your ruler out uh, and you're labeling everything that you need to. Uh, I did it by doing two centimeters as my height and then seven centimeters that way as my depth and five, that way, there's my width. And then you can connect all these up, like so. And one, two, three, four, five, like that. There's my box. Uh, I'm gonna put in my inside lines as well, like so. Uh, and I've labeled one of each length. The volume is width times depth times height, which is 70 centimeters cubed. And then the final part, you can, you can work out the, the volume of the big box. Uh, it's generally easier to think, well, how many five centimeters will go into that 20 centimeters? Four will. The seven centimeters will fit into the 21 three times. And then the two will fit into the six centimeters three times. So I can fit four across, three back and three up, which means I've got uh, 36 of them in that box. Okay, number 11 is about um, straight line graphs. So I'll fill in the tables here uh, and then we'll go, we'll plot them on the, uh, on the graph. 
So on this one, substituting in for x, you get minus 2 and 0. In this one, again, substitute in for x and you get 9 and 3. If you plot those on the graph, then you've got minus 4 minus 3, 0 minus 2, and 8, 0, like so. And draw a straight line through. Do not forget to label it. Like so. The other line is minus 1, 9, 2, 3, and 5, negative 3, like so. And then again, draw a line like this, going through it and label that line. The, uh, the point of intersection, so the next part of the question is here, and that would be 4 minus 1, that's part 3. Uh, part 4, the triangle is formed by this bit here, and the y-axis, there we go, and calculate the area of the shaded triangle, so you won't get the mark if you just count squares, it is half, area of the triangle is half, times base, times height. Uh, if we turn it around, the base would be 9, and the height would be 4. So 9 times 4 is 36, half of 36 is 18 centimetres squared for the area of that triangle. Number 12 is angle chasing in a triangle on parallel lines. Make sure you fill in the angles as you find them. So the first one, A. A is on an F angle here. Uh, corresponding angle, so it's 38 degrees. Label it. B is part of an isosceles triangle uh, with A being 38. So to work out B, it's 180 take away 38, and then that's shared between those two angles. So it's 142 divided by 2, so B is 71, uh, and that one's 71 as well. It's always worth quickly checking that they add up to 180, which they do, thankfully. Uh, angle C is this one here which as you notice, that's an isosceles triangle, so that angle is 38 as well, and then that forms an alternate angle with C, so C is 38 too, uh, and the last one, D, is that one here, uh, which we can work out is the same as this one, so we need to work out this angle here, <laughs> which if we look carefully is another corresponding angle with B. So the whole of it is 71, which means the little bit is 33. So D is opposite that one. So D is 33 degrees uh, as well. Explain why triangle ACD, there's an ACD triangle, is isosceles. Well, it's isosceles if two angles are the same. The two angles which are the same are this one and this one. So you could say angle CAD is the same as ADC, uh, which are both 71 degrees. And that would satisfy uh, me at least. Okay, number 13 is about Mario, the magician. Um, so fill in the table, there's pretty easy marks here, so make sure you get the table right. B square, B circle, B O, uh, Y triangle. Is green with the triangle on? There's only one of those out of 12 possibilities. It's not blue. Well, there are 9 out of 12, which is 3 quarters. Uh, it has red on, or circle on, or both. So those ones are red, those ones have circles. Don't count that one twice. There are six of them, which means it's a half. So Mario then puts back the card, 
He then removes all the red cards, so they're out of the equation now, and puts in a yellow star. Now, uh, what's the problem is it's yellow, and now four yellow ones, uh, out of a total of ten, which simplifies to two fifths. Question 14 is about uh, frequency tables and averages. Uh, the modal, the most common, is that one there, because it happens four times, so it's five tomatoes is the most common. For the median, you can either be clever and work it out from the table, or if in doubt, write them out. So you've got one, two, three threes, two fours, four fives, and two sixes, and then cross them off from each end until you get to the middle two. Now four and five are both in the middle, so the median is halfway between them, like so. This also helps you with the total number of tomatoes grown, and if you add up all these numbers, you get 51. You can also work it out from the frequency table by saying two times one is two, two times three is nine, 4 times 2 is 8, 20, 12, which gives you a total of 51. And the mean number of tomatoes per plant, you've got 51 tomatoes, 12 plants, uh, and that goes in 4, remainder 3, 2, remainder 6, 5. So it's 4.25 or 4 and a quarter. On the pie chart, you've got 360 degrees in a circle. We need to fit 12 plants onto it, which means 30 degrees per tomato. So then with a ruler, it's 30 degrees for two tomatoes. It is a right angle. Right angle for three tomatoes. Uh, it is then 60 degrees for four tomatoes. Uh, then five tomatoes is the big one, 120 degrees, which should leave you uh, 60 degrees for six tomatoes. So make sure you, you get a mark for angles, you get a mark for labeling, and you get a mark for accuracy. So this last one here, make sure it's 60 degrees to within a degree either way and that will make sure that your accuracy is good. Okay, the final question is on a conversion graph. Um, draw a straight line to convert litres into gallons. Well, obviously zero litres is zero gallons. Uh, and then you've got 12 gallons is 54 litres. Uh, there and then you can draw a straight line connecting the two. Show clearly where you take your readings. Uh, Mr. Cook has 45 litres, so you need to find 45 litres, go up and across, and I made that 10 gallons. And then 15 gallons of water, 15 gallons is here. Again, you must make sure you draw your line across, and I made that 68 using a nice sharp pencil and being very accurate. <coughs> and then the final one, 150 litres is not on our graph. So what you can do is do 50, and 50 litres works out as 11 gallons. And then three lots of 50 litres would give you 150 litres, which is then, of course, 33 gallons. Okay, very well done. Add up your marks and see how you've done. Remember to hand your holiday work in after the holiday.